How does a spoon help you get faster in the next gen with your setups? Well, stick around because in today's Fast Friday video, I'll explain. What's up, everybody? Thomas Brandon here. Thank you very much, as always, for joining me. And like I said, we're going to be diving into uh, something with the next gen cup car. And particularly, it's got to do with this. And you might be thinking, what the hell does a spoon have to do with the next gen cup car? But it actually does a really good job of representing, illustrating the importance of the rear diffuser. Now, I'm going to actually show you um, what I mean by that and how using this is just just to illustrate um, how the importance of getting the rear diffuser lined up correctly when it comes to your setup, how that can have a huge effect on the handling and speed of your car. Now, just so you know, um, over the last, those of you guys have been following me over the last three weeks, it's been a, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy September for me. Um, with everything that happened with my grandma up in Washington, um, obviously I went up there when she passed. Um, and then I was just up there all last week for the funeral and, and being with my family and stuff like that. So it's been a crazy month so far. And before all of that stuff happened, I had all this uh, extra stuff going on. I had actually spent a ton of time figuring out the diffuser on the next gen cup car. Now, when I say figuring it out, what I mean is, is that after they did the update to the car back in season three, I think is what it was. Um, but we had the update to the tire parameters and the brakes and all a bunch of different stuff like that. Uh, the way that I went about building the setups for the next-gen car had to really change. Um, the stuff that I had been doing wasn't really working as well as it used to anymore. And so I kind of had to revamp the way that I did it. And I kind of went back and just started from ground zero. And so each week when I was doing the insider stuff, I would take a day and I would basically kind of relearn a new component on the car. And this was done for i mean everything right the arb springs shocks ride heights everything okay everything and what i discovered was a couple of things most importantly getting that rear diffuser lined up correctly really was the foundation for my entire setup when i got that dialed in properly everything else really fell into line and so today in this Fast Friday video, I want to kind of just take you through what it is that you want to be looking for and why, because it's really, really important that you know this because you could have a car that is amazing in terms of your setup. But if you are off just a couple of tenths of an inch in terms of your dynamic ride height or the dynamic tilt and rake of the car it could fall off very very bad and you could actually have a car now that you won't even be able to get through the corner because the rear diffuser will detach and you just spin like that so let's head over and let's take a look at the rear diffuser all right so first and foremost this is the underbody of the next gen car and uh you might recognize this track this is oxford plains um it took me about 15 20 minutes of launching the car off these uh humps here around the light poles to get the thing to finally flip up and not have damage so i could actually examine the underbody of this car and a couple of things are really really important in, in, when you look at the underbody or what they call the underwing of the car so first and foremost this is the rear diffuser this back here and you'll notice that it's essentially the the entire available track width that we have, right? From inside the rear tires. And it runs from in front of the rear tires, right at that rub block, which is the, the right rear rub block that's in front of the rear tires, okay? And all the way out the back, okay? And what you'll notice up here is that this is actually, as you can see here, the center part where we've got the step in the nose, this is actually raised where this is actually 
you can see there's an elevation change in this. So this actually goes, when you look at the those like this, you've got this this hump that is is prevailed right there in the in the front. Now, what was really interesting that I discovered was this right here. And this is really hard to see, but if I zoom in here, you'll get a better look at it. Where the jack stops are underneath these rockers, you can see right here, it's very subtle, but you can see where we have this slight little shaping of this underbody. So this car not only brings air in from the front, but air can come in through the sides and then out this diffuser. You can see where it gets channeled out the back of the diffuser and this will create a ton of downforce. This is why when you run up on the wall, remember like in the Gen 6 car or the Xfinity or the truck, running up on the wall, the wall proximity, the car actually has more grip and can be faster, right? If you're doing it correctly. Where this, the handling can actually get really, really shaky up on the wall in corners. And that's because now you had that air, depending on how the car set up, you had air coming in underneath the car and being, you know, used by the underbody. And now you're not getting that air coming underneath the car there because you're up against the wall. No air can come in. Okay. So this is actually what can cause that problem. Now, Another really important thing about the diffuser is if we look at it like this, okay, there is the floor. You can see right here, the, the rub blocks, okay, they, they're, they only stick up, about, they're only about a quarter of an inch. They're really, really small. And it's either a quarter of an inch or half inch. Either way, they're really small. And you'll see that the diffuser is flat. And then we've got the angle at which the air comes out just like we see with the spoon, right? If we were to look at it like this, you, it comes out at an angle like that. And this is what gives us that suck down that we're looking for, okay? Now this can actually be illustrated using a spoon and some water, all right? So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so what we got here is this is actually a video um, of me. This is my kitchen sink here um, and we have a stream of water and we've got a spoon now you can use this as a really good um, example of this and what happens here is when you watch this watch when the spoon hits the water see how it gets sucked into the water as soon as it touches that's not my hand doing that that's the water pulling the spoon in there and what this illustrates is is that when you get that at the correct angle that will give you that sucking motion that suck down that we're looking for and when you do it correctly you can see how the stream comes off nice and smooth and that's what gives you that nice solid you know stuck to the track feeling that we're looking for it's not that turbulent car feels like it's kind of bouncing around or, or a little bit unstable and this is what you can get with the diffuser when done correctly so million dollar question then what do you got to do to get the diffuser lined up correctly well here's the thing there is no set in stone answer to this okay what you need to understand is that everything with this car is all about the dynamics of the car okay what i can tell you is this dynamically you want to have an you want to have a dynamic rake Okay, so when you are at speed, the rake of the car, right, whether you have a positive or even an inverse rake, is providing enough airflow to the diffuser for it to work. You don't want it to be choked off. You hear some people where they've got the diffuser actually dragging on the ground. That is not a good thing, okay? And you don't have to do that for the car to be good on the long run. You you don't, all right? Um, when I ran the race at Kansas, the, that I live streamed, my car was hands down the best car in that race um, on the long run. And it wasn't even close. Had we not had 50 cautions, you know what I mean? Like it, you know, it would have been able to really show how good it is in the long run. And my diffuser was not dragging on the ground. You don't have to do that. Every setup that I build for the Insider program, I do a complete full fuel run to make sure that the car is stable the entire fuel run even if it's at a track that i don't think we're going to be 
getting you know, a full fuel run out of, I still do it to make sure that the car is going to be stable. So you don't have to have it dragging on the ground. All right. But you want to have the rake correct to where when you are on fresh tires, you're still getting good grip. But as the fuel burns off, because this is really key, the dynamic ride height in the rear can lift about a half an inch, maybe more. That's a lot, okay? When we're talking about these race cars, that's a ton. Keep in mind the shocks, all right, at speed are moving not even a full inch, okay? Like even going through the corners and stuff like that over bumps, they might move an inch, right? Where you're getting an actual inch of movement. So to have the dynamic ride height lift up a half an inch after fuel burns off, that's a big deal. And that can be the difference between having your diffuser tuned excellent and then having the car to where now it's so loose you can't get the throttle it'll literally just slot it'll just snap on you if you've ever gone into the corner after you've burned off like five six gallons and all of a sudden you turn the car and it just like snaps and, and you're like whoa and you, you have to bring it back around that's the diffuser basically detaching all right it's it's you're going into the corner you're diving down in that right rear corner is lifting up and that air is now rushing out instead of pulling it down, and that gives you that snap around. So you want to make sure that your dynamic rake, okay, is at a point that it's not going to be so drastic, okay? You don't want to choke it off. You don't want to have it inverse too much to where it's choking off the air to the diffuser, and you don't want to have it so high that when you burn off fuel, it's going to now cause it to detach and spin. The other very very important aspect of the rear diffuser is the tilt in the corners. When you go into the corners, you want that car to fall to flat. Okay. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, is when you're in a corner, it doesn't matter what corner it is. Okay. It does not matter. Now when it's a flat track, like a Martinsville or a, you know, a Loudon, something like that, those types of tracks, it's a little bit different because the car is, the track is flat essentially. But when we're talking about these bank speedways, especially like the, the bigger ones, right? Even like a, a Bristol, a Dover, um, you know, Charlotte, Vegas, Kansas, right? You name it. These, these bigger high speed tracks have got banking in it. When that thing goes into the corner at the apex, that car should be basically falling to flat, which means that when you look at the car, the dynamic ride heights, the dynamic tilt of the car, the left side should not be higher than the right side. Okay. So if you go into the corner and your left side, just to use simple numbers, is an inch off the ground and your right side is only half an inch off the ground, that tilt is causing you handling and speed. Okay. You want it to be flat. All right. You want it to be flat as close to flat as you can get. Remember when you're on a banked track and you go into a corner, you want the car to squat. You don't want it to roll. When the car is rolling, essentially it's screwing up all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, you know, it's affecting your front cambers. It's affecting your loads and it's affecting what we've been talking about your rear diffuser. Just like when you have too much rake in the car and you go into the corner after burning off fuel, that thing can detach. When you've got too much negative tilt in the car, what can happen is, is now you're going into the corner and that thing is literally rolling over to the right and it's detaching the other way. Okay. And this now what's happening is, is you're getting a lot of suck down on the right side when you're coming up and that can cause you to get that loose effect coming off the corner because now that right side is being sucked down while the left side isn't okay and then what can happen is is when you come up especially if it's a track with like a transition when you're coming up out of that transition and that left side is higher now when it does get pulled back down depending on what kind of shock package you have, springs type of thing like that, that can give you that quick where the car all of a sudden like dips and now it's wanting to shoot to the wall where you overcorrect and all of a sudden you're just bam into the wall. That is where that can come from. So understand the diffuser is very, very temperamental. Okay. And it's far, far better. Always remember this far better to have the car too high than too low. You don't want it dragging on the ground. 
All right. It's much better to have the car a little bit too high than to have it try to have it like sealed off on the ground. Um, to give you guys an example of this, when we ran Daytona just a few weeks ago, all right, and we'll be like this uh, this next week at Talladega. The setup that we had, which was amazing, okay, um, that setup was probably a half an inch to three quarters of an inch higher than every other setup out there that I knew of, right? The I, even the iRacing setup, like we were higher than it. But because when we were at speed in the draft, the car settled dynamically to where we wanted it, where I wanted it. Okay. So always think about the dynamics. Don't get caught up in the statics of what you're seeing in the garage. You want to be thinking about what's the car doing at speed, because that's what's really important. And if you want to fully utilize that, that underbody of the car, right? That underbody and that rear diffuser, getting those aspects correct, the dynamic ride height, tilt, and rake is an absolute must. All right, you guys, so that's going to do it all for this video. I hope this uh, helped you guys some and shed some light on it. I know that this has been one of those topics that a lot of people have asked me about because it can be pretty confusing. And believe it or not, there's not a ton of information out there when it comes to rear diffusers. There's people who explain how they work and things like that. But when you start diving into exactly what you want to be looking for in terms of our applications, right? Like, do we want to have it raked, it tilted, you know, that type of thing. There's not a ton out there and it's largely because, you know, we don't see them in oval racing, right? This is a, a new thing, right? The, the a diffuser on a, on an oval car, right? On a pavement oval car is a completely new thing, right? I mean, we, we've seen diffusers on like Indy cars, right? You know, we see them on F1 cars, GT3 cars. We have never seen them on a NASCAR. So it's a, it's a new thing. And for us, um, and for me specifically, like I just love figuring this stuff out and testing and kind of, you know, learning about it and the ins and outs and then relaying that information. So hopefully this will help you guys, because like I told you, since I really got this dialed in, it has made a huge, huge improvement on the feel and speed of the cars. Um, it really has. I've been, uh, I've had a ton of people um, in the insider program over these last couple of weeks with just, they've just been like, dude, I, this is incredible. You're, you're right. You know what I mean? Cause I've been talking about it saying, look, man, I'm trying these different things. You know, we've had a lot of updated setups and, um, you know, luckily I hit on something and figured it out. So, you know, play around with it, you know, put a little bit of time into it, try some things out and see what you can come up with. Because if you can do that, it, like I said, is huge. It's a lifesaver. Now, really quick, if you're somebody who doesn't want to just test it and, and put in all that time, right? You don't, you're just like, dude, I don't want to have to just kind of do trial and error. I am going to be doing a setup workshop um, for the next gen cup cars. I'm actually going to be doing a setup workshop for all three of the NASCAR series, the trucks, the Xfinity, and the next gen cup cars. Um, we're going to be doing the next gen cup car It'll be the first one that we do because believe it or not, that one will actually take the longest. Um, it's actually going to ha it has the most to there's the, it has the most there. Um, it's going to be, ta it's going to take the longest. So I'm going to actually be doing these workshops here in the coming weeks. Uh, it'll just be here in a couple of weeks. They're going to be taking place in October. Um, these will be paid workshops, but I can tell you, uh, they'll be less than 20 bucks. I mean, it's you know, I mean, it's going to be there will be less than 20 bucks. They're going to be like $15, 17 bucks, something like that. Um, just because it is, I am going to have do video trainings. I'm going to cover all the different aspects and all that stuff like that. So they're going to be very in depth. I'm going to show you exactly what I do building setups for all of these cars. Because like I said, over these last few months, not just the next gen car, I put a ton of work and the testing and, and figuring stuff out with them. And, um, have really got a handle on them, um, in my opinion. I, I, I really have. So um, if you want to learn that stuff from me, make sure you head over to the website, schoolsandracing.net, and click on the button, join community, to get on the email list and be a part of the Discord community and all stuff like that, because that's where I'll be sharing the information when the registration opens up here in the next couple of weeks, okay? Also, if you want to join me for my live streams, I do live stream a couple times a week. Um, now that things are kind of back to normal after all the stuff that's happened so far this month, um, I'll be 
add, add it a whole lot more um, now, usually at least two to three times a week. Uh, this week, I'll be doing it again, I believe Sunday morning, I'll be live streaming. I think I'm going to run the NIS race. I don't know, maybe something else we'll have to see, but usually two, if not three times a week. Um, and I should be actually increasing that to even maybe four nights a week here very, very soon because I got some big, big things happening in the personal and in the home front so hopefully hopefully we'll be around a whole lot more here very very soon but if you want to check any of that stuff out the winner circle uh the insider program the our discord server you know our free membership site all of that stuff there's links for everything down in the description below so that's gonna do it thank you very much as always for joining me i really appreciate it i hope this helped you out um if it did let me know down in the comments below um if you have other questions or anything like that you know our discord server is a great place to ask um, we got a ton of people in there always willing to, to help out and answer questions and, and do test sessions all kinds of stuff so check that stuff out but that'll do it thank you very much as always until next time i want to wish you good luck good racing take care